Hi, my name is uh, Scott Wagner. I'm the terminal manager of the Gulf LNG Terminal in Pascagoula, Mississippi. Uh, work began on the uh, terminal project in late 2007 um, with the dredging of the uh, marine facility dock. Uh, Norfolk Dredging Company uh, came over to Pascagoula to perform the work for us and they had to move approximately 3 million cubic yards of uh, material from the birthing area uh, to create the, uh, the area for the vessels to moor. Um, work on the plant itself started in earnest in early 2008 with uh, clearing and site preparation activities. Uh, as the uh, site preparation activities continued and enough space was cleared for the uh, LNG tanks, Work was commenced on the foundations of the LNG tanks as, as soon as it was practically possible later on in 2008. The foundations of the LNG tanks are comprised uh, of 628 steel pipe piles under each tank. Each pipe pile is about 140 feet long. Uh, to, the, the reason we had to take longer piles was the uh, soils in the area are very soft and with the tremendous load of the LNG tanks, we had to drive them deep enough to get into a very deep, dense sand layer. Uh, this, this necessitated uh, driving first the pile on the 70-foot section, splicing another section of steel pipe pile onto that, and then driving it to its finished depth. Uh, the LNG tanks supported by these piles, uh, each one has a working capacity of 160,000 cubic meters which is equivalent to 1 million barrels or 42 million gallons. Uh, these tanks at the Gulf LNG plant are very similar to uh, one of the tanks at the Elba Island terminal, with the exception of these being full containment tanks. Uh, the primary difference with a full containment tank is the concrete outer wall and, uh, and dome. And essentially with a full containment tank, if you do have a problem with the inner tank and there's any sort of failure, the LNG will still be contained within the outer tank, within the concrete. Whereas on a single containment tank, you have to have a diked area having 110% containment around each individual tank. Um, as we built the tanks, once we started up with the concrete walls, one major undertaking was uh, raising the roof for each tank. And essentially the roof is a uh, steel roof that was raised with air pressure. Um, we only needed approximately 0 0.2 0 .2 pounds of differential pressure to lift the roof, uh, the full height of about 125 feet. Uh, the roof weighing about 1,100,000 pounds was raised with this uh, very small amount of air pressure, but over the huge surface area lifts it to the top. Uh, the next section of the facility to talk about is the marine facility. We've constructed a, a single dock for unloading LNG tankers. Uh, the dock is uh, adjacent to the Bayou Cassatt Channel, so there's a federal channel that serves for uh, vessels visiting at the plant. And again, we can uh, unload one ship at a time. Uh, the dock itself was designed to handle a QMAX LNG carrier, uh, such as the large ship that recently tied up at the Elva facility. We constructed a five-mile pipeline that exits the, exits the plant and uh, <clears throat> goes five miles uh, up the road past a lot of industrial facilities, such as the Chevron refinery, um, a chemical plant, and a phosphates plant. Uh, at the end of our pipeline, we have uh, four interconnects. We unloaded two vessels uh, at the Gulf LNG terminal in June for commissioning of the plant. Uh, the first vessel was the LNG carrier Daslog Singapore, which brought a cargo of approximately 145,000 cubic meters of LNG from Trinidad. We used the first cargo to cool down the plant. We essentially cooled down all the piping and one of the LNG tanks and achieved a liquid level in that LNG tank with the first cargo. Um, upon the arrival of the second ship, which was the LNG carrier Methane Allison Victoria, uh, we had achieved a liquid level in the second tank and for the first several hours of unloading of the Methane Allison Victoria, we build up a liquid level in the second tank so it was fully cooled down. The plant will be ready for service and we'll be asking for uh, in-service designation from FERC and, uh, and we'll be fully operational at that point.